Coming to order, it's the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona, held May 5th, 2015 at 6 p.m. at the Council Chambers Building. Deputy Clerk, please take the roll. Council Member Pratt? Here. Council Member Dowling? Here. Council Member Alinsky? Here. Council Member Garrison? Present. Vice Mayor Piper? Here. Mayor Jones? Here. And Council Member Howard Gee is absent. Okay. The next item is Pledge of Allegiance, and if we could get Jim and Jerry Strande to come up and lead the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The next item is a brief summary of current events by mayor, city council, and or city manager. The public body does not propose, discuss, deliberate, or take legal action on any matter brought up during the summary unless the specific matter is properly noticed for legal action. Mr. Bartosh. Uh, Madam Mayor, Council Members, uh, just a couple of items. Uh, our water literacy program uh, kicked off last week. Um, the, uh, our Youth Commission attended the uh, Governor's Leadership Day uh, down in Phoenix. And uh, next week will be uh, Police Officer Memorial Day. And that's it, Madam Mayor. All right. Mr. Pratt. Yeah, I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, our young people in Cottonwood. On the 24th, I attended the uh, ATORTS production of Thoroughly Modern Millie, and I was totally impressed with those students. It's nice to know we have young people like that. And then I've been reading about our art program at the high school, and they've been winning awards left and right, and two of our, at least two of our youth commission members, uh, Riley McClellan, and I think uh, Ryan Young took first place. So it's good to see that they get praise for other than just sports, as sometimes it's the whole thing. It's, and it's just nice to know we have young people and we have programs like that in our city for our kids. It was excellent. I was able to sneak away and attend it. And, and I, as I understand it, they won a whole bunch of awards. They won the bulk of the acting award, the theater awards at state Statewide. level. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty... Wonderful. Anything else? And I was going to say, Miss Mears was the daughter of an ex-student of mine, right. so that was great. It's a small community, <laughs> Makes right? me feel older, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I attended the Relay for Life at the Cottonwood Middle School <clears throat> on the 24th, and then I, right after that I ran over and attended the keynote dessert event for the Birding and Nature Festival. And that was really, uh, they had a guy that came and did a skit, and he was, uh, I think it was John Audubon of the 1800s. And that was really, he did a great job. It was a lot of fun to see that. Went to Thoroughly Modern Millery on Saturday. Um, on Monday, oh, I was able to attend the Laughs event, and this is, um, what LAFS stands for, I'm not sure, <laughs> all these acronyms, but it's our fire departments and Verde Valley Ambulance, uh, Verde Valley Fire Department, Cottonwood Fire Department, the Forest Service get together and go all over to our schools to uh, do a little skit. And this one was on defensible space. So I could just see all those little children going around, going home and telling their parents about defensible space. Their parents are probably very well educated after that. But that was an excellent event that I really enjoyed seeing. And I was able to make it to the, whenever they send out the schedule to us, I always try to figure out a time I can go. And it was at Mountain View Preparatory was the slot that I was able to make. And let's see, is there anything else that I've been doing? Okay, 30th. As I understand it, um, maybe Jesse can fill us in on the contractors meeting. I wasn't able to attend this past one. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, we've been having a monthly uh, meeting with the contractors in the area and the planning staff. Uh, I've been making those, and it's been very productive. I think that uh, the city is learning a lot from the contractors, and the contractors are really picking up a lot, um, or sort of seeing what the city staff has to deal with and, and the hoops they have to jump through, and it's really helping to establish some understanding on both sides. And we're, I think we're making good progress to just make us a more efficient city. I really hated to miss the meeting, but it, I knew it would be Plus lots of resolutions. The food is pretty good. Yeah, the food is great. <laughs> um, then I was invited to go on a hospital tour. It's called the Expedition. And um, I would just like to encourage staff or council or any members of the public, if you would like to see the different departments and our Verde Valley Medical Center, uh, you could contact me and I could send in your name or um, you could contact the hospital directly. And it was just really excellent to see the various departments. We have a hospital that we can be extremely proud of. Uh, they've won a lot of different awards on cleanliness and um, they were sharing that we really do have a clean hospital. That's really important to me. Um, but just really lots of services available and staff that uh, cares about the patients and it's also as an economic um, development piece of our community it's it's excellent it provides living wage jobs the Verde Valley Medical Center and um, helps lots of people provide for their families and in the city of Cottonwood itself it um, employs the highest number of people of any other businesses so excellent institution and we're very blessed and lucky to have that um, so with that I'll share That's, just one yes oh, Randy go, go ahead. ahead either one go ahead you both just, get a turn all right I uh, wanted to share I was able to run down to Central Phoenix today because the Flynn Brown um, Leadership Academy was hosting a legislative wrap-up where they uh, explained to the graduates of the Academy what what this year's session uh, had in store for us. So it was, um, it was interesting. It was just over lunch. Um, but one thing I took home that I thought I'd share with the public here is that uh, it was obviously a, a difficult budget session this year. And um, of, of all the cuts that were made to balance the state's budget, 12% of those cuts, uh, which equals $60 million, were put on the backs of cities and towns. So I thought that was an interesting uh, slice of the pie. And I attended via the Blue Jeans application on, oh, okay. on the iPad, so I got to hear it also. And I, I really, I had the same question that Paul Brierley had, mm -hmm. was the state's not raising taxes, right? Didn't we all hear that? Right. But they put $60 million on the backs of cities, towns, and counties, and so they really are raising taxes mm -hmm. because you know, if you don't get your your highway revenue, uh, highway user revenue funds, then you're probably bonding for some things you could have paid for out of what the state really owed you. So we'll have those discussions tonight also. But um, it was a, it was excellent to get that update, Andy. Uh, I gave some erroneous information earlier. Uh, the Epi College Governing Board. Verde Valley Advisory Committee is meeting tomorrow. We meet the first and third Wednesdays of every month from 8.30 to 10.30. Tomorrow's meeting will be at VX offices uh, across from, what's the restaurant there? The, uh, the sushi place. Anyway, their office is uh, at the financial center uh, below the Valley View Motel. And uh, Tomorrow, uh, VIAC will be given a presentation to that group on uh, what programs they have going and, and how they, their programs can tie into the college and the uh, services and the classes the college offers. And then we'll be getting a, a presentation on the master plan for the campuses for the Verde Valley as well. Uh, those are open to the public. You're all more than welcome to come and listen to what goes on and see what your college is doing in your community. Okay. Great. Anything else, council members? Can I piggyback on something about the college? Absolutely. The public may not know that uh, yesterday was the last day of the spring semester, but the summer semester is due to start at the beginning of June. We have some really good classes. It is time to register, so hopefully we'll see some of you folks in the classes up there. 
Great. And then um, in June for VerdeValleyTV.com, we're going to be interviewing Terrence and Carly Way right. to talk about the college. So that will be coming up for the month of June. Yeah, we're really making a concentrated effort to reach out to the public and let them know this is your college. Absolutely. Let's come enjoy it. Love our college. Okay, proclamations. The number is down this month compared to <laughs> April and March. Okay, so the first one is proclaiming May 2015th as Bicycle Awareness Month and the week of May 11th through 15th as Bike to Work Week. We have Hezekiah Allen here tonight to get the proclamation. And so we'll go ahead. Do you want to share any information with us? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, um, last Saturday we had our opening to the Bicycle Awareness Month with the Mayor's Ride and uh, the Bike Rodeo. It was a great turnout and uh, that's why I'm here because most of the BAC members was at the, were at that those two events. So thank you for this opportunity. And I didn't get over to Saturday. Yes, we had really a great attendance mm -hmm. for the bike ride. But I did miss our council members that <laughs> were going to be there. Yes. <laughs> But I, I think it was the best attendance that we've ever had yeah. for a bike ride. That's, that's what I heard. Uh, and all of the riders were very pleased to hear that the council worked so hard, council and especially staff, worked so hard on the bicycle issues in the community and were working on becoming, going from a bronze status to a silver. So they were all pleased to hear that. So the proclamation is, Whereas, for more than a century, the bicycle has been an important part of the lives of most Americans, and whereas today, Americans are turning to the bicycle more than ever before as a means of becoming a part of the solution in our nation's quest to better our citizens' health, improve our environmental quality, and provide our energy independence and do overwhelmingly support improving our quality of life and providing quality recreational opportunities for our families and our visitors. And whereas the League of American Bicyclists and its chapters have declared my, May, May as Bike Month since 1956, and whereas the City of Cottonwood Bicycle Advisory Committee, our Valley's chapter of the League, and independent cyclists throughout Arizona are calling for greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety in an effort to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities, and to increase enjoyment for all. Now therefore, I, Diane Jones, Mayor of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona, do hereby proclaim May 20, 2015 as Bicycle Awareness Month and the week of May 11th through 15th to be Bike to Work Week throughout all of Cottonwood and urge all residents, schools, city departments, and civic groups to support bicycling and for motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists to work together to share our streets, roads, and trails. And witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, this fifth day of May, 2015. And I'd like the council to come up and staff, whoever's uh, on our staff, I think most of them are in the back, but um, Commander Isenka, whoever works in the city on bicycle issues, if you come up and help me present this.
Thank you very much. And the next proclamation is proclaiming May 21st through 25th, 2015 as Poppy Week. And we have um, the, the American Legion Post 135 here tonight, and this is also on behalf of American Legion Post 25 here in the Upper Verde Valley. Whereas America is the land of freedom, preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizen soldiers. And whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle. And whereas a nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died in war. And whereas the red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of lives in all wars. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind America annually of this debt through the distribution of the memorial flower. Therefore, I, Diane Jones, Mayor of Cottonwood, do hereby proclaim May 21st 20 through 25th, 2015, as Poppy Week and ask that all citizens in Cottonwood and Cornville pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy on this day. And witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the official seal of Cottonwood, Arizona, this fifth day of May, 2015. And we have um, Jerry Strande here to accept this on behalf of the American Legion's auxiliaries. So on behalf of the City Council, we would like to present you. this proclamation to you. You just have to like hold it for quite a while. I do not know why it's doing that. There you go. And I'd like to present to you for a copy of the season. Thank you. And all the council members. Thank you. So to get that to them, I have to undo this. But you're a mini talented woman. This is the easiest thing. The easiest thing I've done all day. All right. So would you like to help me pass those out to our council members? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, just because you're getting on tonight doesn't mean you don't need to do it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> you just had a special look on your face, so. <laughs> um, so Kyla and I and Lana all went down to watch William receive this award, the Governor's Award. Is there anything that Kyla or Lana would like to share about the evening that we went down? It's, you haven't got a lot of time to think about that. And I, I will go ahead and share, as Lana will probably share with you, the arts in Cottonwood and the Verde Valley are extremely important to our economic development. But if you ladies would like to share. I think it was, it was an awesome event. It was such an amazing thing to see so many people so invested in the arts. And I can't think of another individual that represents the valley with our superior um, events that we have here and our spirit representation of the arts more than William Eaton. So I was so pleased that he got it. It was an amazing night because there were a number of people uh, that were nominated in each category and the category that William won in, there were 15 nominations. The others had maybe six or seven. So uh, Cottonwood really got to shine that night and um, William had no idea, so it was great just to see the look on his face when he figured out it was him. But uh, it, was, it was awesome. The video they did really showcased what William has done uh, for not only Cottonwood, but for arts around the state. So it's very exciting what, uh, you know, the arts and culture are becoming much more important here in Cottonwood, and we're very happy to, to have him part, as part of our community. Absolutely. So many of you probably don't know that um, William uh, is the director and I guess I would say owner of the uh, guitar school in Phoenix and it's the something then, remind me? Roberto. Roberto Vin, thank you. Um, guitar school and you have done that for four, 40 years that he has been teaching people all over the world really how to build guitars. And he is um, an amazing musician within his own right. He, he makes these interesting guitars, which you can find on, on the internet. You can find out all, all kinds of information about those guitars. But he, he also plays them, and he's played for our Walking on Main events and other events in the community. A lot of the work that he, he also has a degree in um, business, economics from Stanford University, so when he brings information to the council, it's really smart information. You know, he's just an extremely, besides an artist, you know, he's extremely, um, I would say both right and left brain probably. <laughs> he's multidexterous in his talents. Um, he's also, he was raised in Nebraska, and he's uh, gotten lots of awards for pole vaulting. So that's something that you probably wouldn't know about William. But he really brings a lot to the city of Cottonwood through the Old Town Center for the Arts. And he and his wife Christine took an old building that needed a little bit of love and care and they, they gave it that love and care and they've created this beautiful venue. And because of all of his connections all around the world, he is, brings talent to Cottonwood that you would not believe. If you haven't been to the Old Town Center for the Arts on a Friday or a Saturday night, please do check it out. It's just, you go in there and there's just some kind of special feeling that you get. I just, it's hard to describe, but it's just a very special place. So there's lots of talent that comes from all over the world. I just um, saw three, I guess it was Ukrainians Russians that came and they, um, it was the Crystal Trio, I think. And they used, they played on crystal. They played beautiful classical music. Um, so that was something really unique. But every week there's just really great talent. And you would just not believe that that's happening right here in our little community, Cottonwood, Arizona. So he's just really a blessing to everyone here in the Verde Valley. And uh, we just wanted to recognize him tonight. And we have just, I don't, I guess you probably didn't bring the art piece that you received, did you? I didn't think you might have done that. And so um, I asked our city clerk to make this little certificate for you. 
which she did. So if you would come up and receive this. And council, I'd just like you all to come down and, and give this certificate. Can, can I add one thing quick? Oh, I'm sorry, it, yes. It does have an economic impact, but also more than that, I just think it adds to our quality of life and just makes Cottonwood much more enriching place to live. And Absolutely. You have enriched so, the lives of many, William. We appreciate that. So council and city manager, if you come up to help tell him how much we appreciate him. And Terrence, if you would please um, give out the certificate. So, so Terrence is going to give out the certificate because he is quite involved in the arts himself. So. so much to me and to have Diane and Lana and Kyla down there at the awards is just what a special beauty. So I uh, the only thing I feel bad about now is taking up so much time is me. <laughs> but but, I, but I, I, I just have to say how much I, how honored I am to be part of this community. And uh, you know to, to, to have these things that happen and to be in the city of a decade. You know and, and what Cottonwood has been doing with the water statements they made about sustainability, uh, Casey's work with community development, Atlanta with the chamber, I mean all these, uh, Doug, every, every of the, the contributions that all of you make is just unbelievable. So I'm, I just, I feel just honored to be part of all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The vice mayor would like to make a comment. If you've never been there, it's really fantastic. I think what Diane was feeling, when you go through the doors of, of Old Town Center for the Arts, it's like going back in time. You can go into a movie theater any day, you get the same feeling, but when you go into there, it's, it's such a unique, peaceful, entertaining, 
uh, enjoyable evening, and it is like going back in time with the stage and, and the way that I they set that it up. I think that describes it. So thank you, William, for bringing that to Cottonwood. Okay, moving to the next item, presentations. Oh, let's see. Okay, presentations. Update um, from the Historic Preservation Commission regarding its annual report to the State Historic Preservation Office. And we have um, Charlie Scully with us tonight to explain this item to the public and the council. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor and council members. I'm actually gonna introduce Commissioner Ryan Bigelow, who will give the presentation. Uh, Ryan has been with the Historic Preservation Commission since it was first established by the city council in 2010. And one of the projects that he was involved with uh, more recently was with the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission, who happens to be uh, council member Tim Malinsky. And that project was uh, working to uh, organize the first annual Cottonwood Historic Home and Building Tour last fall, which was very successful. So here's our commissioner, <coughs> Ryan Bigelow. All you. right. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Charlie, Madam Mayor, Council. Appreciate you guys' time tonight. Um, Charlie has uh, done, a, done a wonderful job along with Baron and uh, Christina's help. Um, staff has just done a, done a great job in supporting this commission as, as well as the council. Um, we wanted to provide you guys kind of an update as to where we're at um, since 2010, since we, this thing has been created. Um, we, we feel like we've accomplished a lot and wanted to make sure that you guys and, and the public are aware of some of those accomplishments. So. Um, Charlie put together a, a really nice um, update to present to SHPO, which is the um, State Historic Preservation Office. It'll be an annual report that, that uh, we'll be presenting to them, and, and I'm going to give you guys some of the highlights tonight. Um, some of the things we've been able to accomplish were in January of 2014, uh, we became a certified local government program, um, which really just gives us some legit legitimacy in, in the things that we are doing. Um, they have basic requirements which allow us to, to be the authority, essentially, of, of some of the landmarks and designations that are out there. Um, one of the things that we need to do um, are maintain a system and survey the inventory of the local historic resources. This survey is uh, obviously going to be fairly time consuming, but uh, with some GIS mapping <laughs> tools we'll be able to utilize, hopefully, um, uh, that that'll be something that we can incorporate along with staff um, using some mapping to survey and inventory the, the historic properties in the area. Um, another thing that we need to do is provide for public participation. Um, we're uh, currently working on a public outreach program um, to kind of educate uh, the public on what it is that we're trying to do and some of the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Um, we see us as, uh, as something that where we want to be an extension of staff and try to help people um, as opposed to create more regulation, essentially. Um, one of those things we're going to be doing is uh, this summer for the overlay district that we're looking at creating, uh, we definitely want to create an educational opportunity and also uh, just invite public to, to talk with us a little bit about how that's going to work. Um, the, Preser the Historic Preservation Commission has been able to landmark two buildings. Um, the Old, Old Town Cottonwood Jail um, has been landmarked and also the Cottonwood Civic Center has been landmarked. So, um, those are two uh, major accomplishments for us, and we will continue to try to landmark more buildings and, and homes in the area, part of the continuing the education process and, and working on that overlay district. Um, we are in the process of creating uh, historic preservation designs and standards guidelines. Um, this will be a tool for us uh, and staff to use to determine the appropriate approach to any construction, reconstruction, or alterations of any of the historic preservation properties. Um, this is just going to be able to uh, review standards, uh, make sure that everything is in place so we are educated as well as the public on, on how this process is going to work and there's um, some continuity with the standards. Um, of course, uh, as, as Charlie mentioned, the, we, we did the first annual or the inaugural Cottonwood Historic Home and Building Tour in November. Um, we felt like that was a, a great success, another great education opportunity. Shake hands with some people, um, go door to door and, and talk with some people about the process, um, about what, we're, what we are trying to do. Of course, uh, 
as William stands here, uh, he, he opened his doors to, to the building and we got to learn a little bit about uh, his building and including that we're, there were some Bigelows who, who were able to help make that building, so we're lucky it's still standing, I, I think, <laughs> um, knowing my relatives and my family background. Um, we're already, we've already conducted a few meetings actually to plan for the 2015 event, which should only be bigger and, and better um, than the 2014. And then um, staff has done a really nice job of creating a uh, strategic plan for the, for the commission as well. Um, uh, just to keep us on track, keep us uh, keep the meetings productive. Um, some of the some of the highlights of, of that are, um, of course, we're going to work be working on the historic preservation overlay zoning district, uh, the public awareness again, um, and I wanted to make mention that we've been uh, or actually Annabelle Sklippa has been um, doing a then and now series uh, that has been published in the paper to kind of again create more awareness of the historic properties here in town. Um, and also, Glenda Farley has been put together a uh, Verde Heritage series in the Verde Independent. Uh, it's a blog that uh, indicates a lot of the, the history that we have in town. Um, that's, uh, that's kind of the annual report that, that, we've, that has been submitted um, to SHPO. I want to thank you guys for all of your support um, and uh, definitely want to, want to continue to do this and, and continue to make progress with, the, with this commission. So thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. Did you have something to add, Mr. Ilinski? I didn't, I didn't have anything to add. I appreciate uh, Mr. Bigelow coming up and giving a presentation. I think it's good to keep the council informed on what the Historic Preservation Commission is up to. Um, I did maybe have a question for staff, um, Charlie or Barron, and that this is your opportunity to ask council if there's anything that council can do to support the Historic Preservation Commission more. <laughs> The question is, is there anything that staff feels uh, they need from council to help support the Historic Preservation Commission? Uh, this is your opportunity, Charlie, to Two million to, to dollars. Beg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we'll have uh, some more ideas from the commission that we would like to bring those ideas forward in a, in a more organized manner. Mm -hmm. And there's been so many different <coughs> ideas. I think you'll find some of them are um, ways to bring us up to speed and, uh, with what other communities are doing to recognize historic preservation, more uh, identification of that we have a historic district, a national historic district. It'd be nice to have some signage. It'd be nice to identify some more signage. Those are like bronze plaques that have some cost. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's things like that that people would like to see, residents and tourists and everybody. I did read about the signage and the document that you uh, gave us website tonight. presence. We, we really, they really have a lot yeah. of background material that uh, done a lot of research on that, and just more inf getting more information out to people on what's uh, existing and, and opportunities. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a meeting tomorrow. If anybody's interested in attending, we meet here, usually on the second Wednesday. But uh, a number of people are going to the state. Historic Preservation Conference, the annual one, which is held up at uh, this year's in Flagstaff. That starts in a couple next week. So, yeah, it'd be great to have a great web presence. I liked. I think that's a great idea. A lot of communities take this uh, historic preservation and put it more in the forefront of the identity of the community, and that uh, it is such an interesting thing that people are. Uh, it's one of the most popular reasons that uh, people are traveling and. Uh, Wide, widely uh, appreciated. So, we're just trying to keep moving it forward and uh, what we can as a commission. I'd like to say that we had uh, an intern recently, Jason Valencia, who uh, helped the commission out tremendously. So, any support the council could give us to retain another intern or keep him or get another, get a whole bunch of interns, fleet. <laughs> a fleet of interns would be. Would be great. A fleet of interns, <laughs> um, but it, it does help, you know, relieve the burden of staff from their day to day. I know, I, you know, I begged and pleaded to get the Historic Preservation Commission formed, and so we didn't increase any staff. We just increased the burden on staff. Um, but uh, we have made a lot of headway, and I think we could be a lot more effective if there was another intern, another part-time position, somebody else to help out the the, uh, the planning department. Um, because Charlie's right. Uh, Historic preservation is one of the driving um, reasons people 
it's, it's a tourism, it's, a, it's an economic driver, frankly, and I think we could do a lot more if we had uh, more support and, of course, more money. Any other comments? Any comments from members of the public? If not, thank you very much for the presentation and the update. And keep up the great work, all of you. Okay, the next item is call to the public. This portion of the agenda is set aside for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda for discussion. However, the council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda for discussion and or action. Comments are limited to a five minute time period. And we have Mr. Hahn with us tonight who would like to make comments. I'm not here to ask you for anything tonight. And you may be aware of this already, but if you're not, in 1979, the town of Cottonwood purchased 52 acres, which became the Riverfront Park. Uh, in the next few years, three additional parcels were purchased or accepted as gifts. And then with each of these three parcels, the town uh, signed contracts agreeing not to use these for sewer treatment plants. Uh, this might be needed to be researched to make sure that you don't lose a property or get involved in lawsuits. lawsuits. Uh, the other item is uh, this year, 2015, is the 130th anniversary of the town of Cottonwood founding. Uh, on July the 9th, 1885, uh, the first post office was established here in Cottonwood. So this makes 130 years. So if you're looking for an excuse to have a party, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. And Mr. Hahn is a former mayor. You will see his, his uh, photo up on the wall. And what years did you serve as mayor? Quite a while, quite a lot of years. All right. All right. Great. And in those days, I think the mayor was appointed by the city council. Is that correct? And so you um, were able to have a good relationship with your council and get appointed three times. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, Barbara Luttrell is here to talk about mental health awareness. Mayor, Council, thank you. My name is Barbara Luttrell. I live in Sedona and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak about um, the Mental Health Coalition of the Verde Valley, which I'm here tonight representing, and Mental Health Awareness Week, which is May 11th through 15th. I missed your deadline for a proclamation. I apologize, but I appreciate the opportunity to bring you up to date on this because a number of the events are taking place in Cottonwood. Um, the Mental Health Coalition was formed in 2013, in September, as a result of a statewide conversation about mental health issues in Arizona. And at the end of that meeting, which took place at Yavapai College in Sedona, uh, there, were, there were professionals at that from all areas of the mental health arena. And at the end of it, as you looked around, it was obvious that people wanted to continue to do something. And so a steering committee formed and has been meeting, the group has been meeting on a monthly basis. There are about 70 members of the coalition at this point, and on, a, on average, about 20 to 25 meet on a monthly basis. Uh, it was established with the vision of a safe, healthy, inclusive community where all individuals and families challenged by mental illness can live full and rewarding lives. The mission of the coalition is to build community support and awareness for individuals and families challenged by mental illness through education, advocacy, and community services, which also includes uh, working with the sheriff's office on the intersection of mental illness and criminal justice. And there are wonderful, wonderful things happening in that area right now. And some of the facts about mental illness. One in four adults experience mental illness every year. I mean, the numbers are staggering. And approximately half of chronic mental illness begins by the age of 14. 
And so adolescent mental illness is also a very important issue. Mental illness includes depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, anxiety disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and borderline personality disorder. In all of these areas, one of the key issues that people face is the stigma associated with mental illness. And so the, co the, mental, um, the mental Health Coalition of the Verde Valley, uh, perhaps you could just pass this around, pass this around Doug. thanks. The Mental Health um, Coalition of the Verde Valley established May 11 through 16 as Mental Health Awareness Week. We have 12 events taking place. The flyer is coming around to you, and I'll leave a few more on the back table for those of you in the public. They are presentations, speakers, films, and community conversations. And three of them are in Cottonwood on Tuesday, May 12th at 6 p.m. at the high school. Bully to Silence will be shown, and a conversation will take place. And this is aimed at teachers and parents and community members and the students at the schools because bullying is a really, really significant problem. And the community conversation that takes place following this is aimed at positive change. In addition to that, at, on Wednesday, May 13th at 1.30, addressing issues that relate to seniors in our community. And we know that many seniors, between um, memory loss and other issues that they're facing, the film Alive Inside is going to be shown. Elaine has been wonderful at the community center. And we'll be showing it at 1.30 and follow that up also with a community conversation. And, I'm hap and we, also, we have another event that evening at uh, Spectrum Healthcare where they will be talking about the changes to the access programs. And so that is open to the public. And I'm really happy William's here so I can thank you in person. Uh, because when I was looking for a venue to show Running From Crazy on Friday evening at 7 p.m., I just put in a call to William or sent him an email. And he said, yes, absolutely. So on Friday evening at 7 o'clock, we'll be showing Running From Crazy, which is the story of Mariel Hemingway and her family and the fact that they have faced suicide in almost every generation and how she has worked to break that cycle and for herself and her children. All of the events are free. So we invite all of you to attend. We invite all of the public to attend. Uh, there is a website that has all of the information on it. We're grateful to sponsors uh, who are helping us to finance a number of these projects. And I think my five minutes are up. So thank you very much. And I hope thank that you're you. able to attend. Thank, thank you, you very much for coming down and sharing that information with us. OK, moving on to the next item. Approval of minutes, work session of April 14th, 2015, and regular meeting of April 21st, 2015. They look good to me, Mr. Pratt. I move to approve the minutes of the work session of April 14th, 2015, and the regular meeting of April 21st, 2015. Second. Uh, so Mr. Pratt made the motion. Mr. Elinsky seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, the next item is unfinished business. Um, comments regarding items listed on the agenda are limited to a five minute time period per speaker. Ordinance number 612, renewal of Cable One's Cable TV license, second and final reading, and approval of proposed license agreement. Um, Madam Mayor, Mr. Council, Horton. Um, this item will allow, uh, I, I don't think we need to, uh, I need to belabor it, uh, will allow Cable One to continue providing cable TV services on a non-exclusive basis and operate within the uh, rights of way of the city um, for another 10 year period. Um, this time, rather than incorporating the business terms of the relationship within code, we've developed a separate licensing agreement and also previously, council will recall, we have increased the, the license fee that will come to the city from three to five percent. And I'd be happy to field any questions. Any questions? We've discussed this at several meetings, Mr. Pratt. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we discussed this at length, and even uh, Cable One was on board with the increase in the 
the rate because that's typically what they're playing and paying in other communities. So it seemed to me that this was a good deal. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this item? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Pratt, did you have your hand up? I move to approve the uh, contract with Cable One for, I, I move to approve ordinance number 612, renewal, renewal of Cable One's cable TV license with Second. the city of Cottonwood. Second. And would you add, Mr. Pratt, the, the proposed license agreement, which is related but separate? With the, and the proposed license agreement. Second again. As presented. Okay, so Mr. Pratt made the motion, the vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Deputy Clerk, please read ordinance number 612 by title only. Ordinance number 612, an ordinance of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, renewing Cable One Inc.'s non-exclusive license to construct, install, and operate lines, wires, coaxial cable, and appurtenances for originating, receiving, distributing, and supplying radio, television, and other cable communication services along, across, and upon the public streets, ways, alleys, and places within the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, for another 10-year period, pursuant and subject to Cable One's compliance with Chapter 5.12 of the Cottonwood Municipal Code and its approval, execution, and compliance with a certain license agreement, therefore, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Consent agenda. The following items are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Item one is award of bid for generator maintenance and repair services. Item number two is application for assignment of Cable One's cable television television license from Graham Holdings to Cable One, Inc. Item number three is consideration of a new liquor license application for Roger K. Burton, Burton applicant for Giant Store number 016, located at 999 South Main Street. Item number four is resolution number 2795 appointing Anna Curton as an associate city magistrate and establishing her term of office. Resolution number 2797 approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Department of Transportation for connectivity to the ALIS, which is the Accident Location Identification and Surveillance System database and safety data mart for crash records and data. Item number six is resolution number 2796, reappointing Janie Randall as an associate magistrate for a two-year term. Item number seven is resolution number 2794, reappointing Mary E. Ham as an associate magistrate. Item number eight is acceptance of a perpetual maintenance and access easement for a water main line in the Mesquite Hills subdivision. Um, and it has the APN numbers there, which I don't think I need to read, so. Okay, so council, are there any items that you wish to be removed for discussion? Uh, members of the public, are there any items that you wish to have removed for discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Vice okay. Mayor? I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. So the mayor made a motion to approve the consent agenda, and who was first on the second? It was the vice mayor. It was the vice mayor made the motion. Oh, the vice mayor. Thanks for the promotion. <laughs> here, move over here right now. <laughs> I like where I am. Get over here and let's change seats. <laughs> the vice mayor made the motion, and I'll say Councilman Garrison seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Deputy Clerk, you have a little reading to do tonight. Please read resolutions number 2795, resolution number 2797, resolution number 2796, and resolution number 2794 by title only. I'm just gonna read them in order. Okay, we have, please do that. 
uh, resolution number 2794, a resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, appointing Mary E. Ham as an associate city magistrate and establishing her term of office. Resolution number 2795, a resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, appointing Anna Curtin as an associate city magistrate, establishing her term of office. Resolution number 2796, the resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, reappointing Janie D. Randall as an associate city magistrate and establishing her term of office. And resolution number 2797, a resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Department of Transportation for connectivity to the ALS database and safety Department for crash records and data. Okay. Data mark crash records and data. All right. Thank you very much. So, how is that really pronounced? That acronym, ALIS or ALIS or do you know? I think the second S is system. Okay. It said, I mean, in the documents, it, and it says here too, but I just didn't know how to say it myself. Okay, new business. The following items are for council discussion, consideration, and possible legal action. Consideration and possible adoption of resolution number 2793, approving the sale and execution and delivery of not to exceed $18 million aggregate principal amount of pledged revenue obligations, evidencing a proportionate interest of the owners thereof in a purchase agreement approving the form and authorizing the execution and delivery of such pur purchase agreement and other necessary related agreements, instruments and documents, delegating authority to determine certain matters and terms with respect to the foregoing, adopting post-issuance tax compliance and continuing disclosure compliance procedures, authorizing the taking of all other actions necessary to the consummation of the transactions contemplated by this resolution and declaring an emergency. Mr. Rodriguez. Mayor Council, I'm really glad uh, the Mayor read that out because that is awfully long. Um, we, we've kind of touched base on this item on and off over the years. And you may recall that back in, we've been talking about this since about 2008. Uh, where we had several capital projects that needed to move forward and rather than bonding then we went ahead and started uh, paying a lot of them out of our capital improvements fund with uh, with the idea that we would be coming back at some point and, and reimbursing ourselves for some of these major capital projects and we but, did pass several several resolutions as we went along to that effect uh, we, As we, we did projects. Some of them have expired. However, we're, we're actually looking to uh, re reimburse ourselves for the uh, 12th Street project from 1st Street to 89A. Uh, it's in two different sections, but the total uh, reimbursement uh, will be was about $3.5 million. The Mingus Street project, which is, went from, is going from Willard all the way down to Maine, $3.8 million. Um, the, Me the Mesquite Hills water line project to a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, the Mesquite, uh, I mean the water um, uh, roof removal, water wastewater roof, roof removal and solar project uh, over at our wastewater treatment plant to the tune of half a million dollars. We're looking to uh, build one restroom over at the kids park uh, and relocate the one over at Garrison Street, the Garrison Park, and actually update the riverfront uh, park restrooms to the tune of $650,000. Our communication center that is currently uh, already up and operational, we're looking at $2.6 million worth of reimbursement to the city of Cottonwood. We also have a tentative item on there to the tune of $4.3 million, which would be the uh, the estimated cost to underground the utilities, which we've discussed in the past, is in this particular amount of $14 million. We have, we have set aside, uh, we have set a number of not to exceed of $18 million in case there's anything that comes up between now and the time we actually go out and float, the, float these obligations. And uh, we have discussed these in the past, and uh, I do have uh, 
Grant Hamill, who's our financial advisor on, on such matters. He's been with us for I think, over 20 years and he has, has never steered us wrong yet. Uh, and we don't expect this one uh, to expect him to steer us wrong on this one, obviously. Uh, we've had some conversations on and off uh, between the city manager, our attorneys, uh, our bond counsel, and, uh, and Grant Hamill and myself uh, over the, this particular no, um, obligation. And uh, we're asking council to please approve uh, resolution uh, number 2793, which allows us to go move forward with this project. So, council, uh, did Mr. Hamill want to share any information before we start questions, or? And Madam Member, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, Grant Hamill with Stephen Nicholas. The uh, the term pledged revenue obligations is one that you probably haven't heard before, but that's really basically revenue bonds that the city would issue to finance the projects that Mr. Rodriguez described, as well as some of those projects for reimbursement. These would be revenue bonds uh, issued with a credit rating that would be applied for if the council decides to go forward. And the bonds would amortize over an approximately 25 year period of time. Uh, with an interest rate not to exceed four and a quarter percent, which is part of the resolution, but in actuality, uh, in the current market, we would expect the interest rate to be around three and a half to 3.75 percent. Uh, these revenue bonds would be supported by uh, general excise tax revenues of the city, uh, which I believe this. Uh, this year we're budgeted at about fifteen and a half million dollars. The estimated debt service on the bonds would be about one and a quarter million dollars per year. So there's ample coverage there in support of the bonds. So we would anticipate pretty uh, strong uh, credit rating to be assigned to those bonds before they would be issued in the public markets. Um, and. With that, I'd be very happy to answer any questions you may have. Mr. So some of our revenue bonds um, have attached to them a debt coverage ratio to these bonds. Will these bonds have that same uh, ratio? And, and what is that? Council Member Malinsky, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, these bonds as revenue bonds would in fact have a coverage requirement of 1.5 times debt service, which is Pretty, uh, pretty liberal. It provides room for future issuances of, of debt. If, if there were any parity bonds issued in the future, they would have those same coverage requirements. Um, uh, the city council currently has an obligation with the state through the Greater Arizona Development Authority that also has a coverage requirement. Those, that particular loan with the state uh, is supported by a portion of your current excise taxes, which is state shared revenues and also your limited sales tax of 0.2%. So those are pledged to that loan, but any uh, surplus of those revenues along with the balance of your excise taxes are pledged, would be pledged to these revenue bonds. So they'll be fully supported by the <coughs> sales tax? Correct. And these would be tax-exempt obligations issued to the credit markets uh, available to institutional and retail investors. And our rating looks good now because our debt ratio projected is, is fairly good. Uh, on these particular obligations, th these would be completely separate from uh, your water revenue <coughs> bonds. Uh, these would have a much higher coverage than your water revenue bonds, and therefore they should command a higher credit rating, I would anticipate they would be in the A to A plus rating, which is, you know, uh, investment grade, medium investment grade rating. The bonds would be issued with call provisions. So if down the road, if interest rates came down, or if the city wanted to retire the debt, uh, the bond would probably have a 10-year a call provision. So in 
2025, the council could elect to call and retire uh, those bonds, uh, these bonds. Um, and of course, you want that provision in case interest rates come down and you elect to refinance that, that debt. However, they're capped at four and a quarter, so they'll never exceed that within the 25 year term yeah, of the loan. Yeah, these are fixed rate bonds. So once the, the interest rates are established, uh, uh, when the bonds are issued, those will be fixed over the life of the bonds. I would add that even though interest rates, as you know, have started to trend up the last few weeks, uh, the interest rates today are still about uh, 40 basis points lower than they were a year ago. So even though people are thinking, gosh, rates are trending up, from a historical perspective, they're really still quite strong. And it's a, a pretty favorable environment with which to issue debt. A lot of Arizona uh, issuers are selling debt in today's market, principally for refunding purposes, uh, but also for some new money projects. But a lot of the volume is dominated by refinancings. And if I might just jump in to clarify uh, Mr. Alinsky's question, he, the the rate of the bonds hasn't been set yet until we get our credit rating. The what's being capped tonight is the ability to issue bonds based on your authority to do so at no more than four and a quarter. So so we wouldn't proceed um, if if the rate were to for any reason exceed that. Okay, and then so before the bonds are callable within that ten year period. Um, is there a penalty to, to pay them off? There would not be. There oh, okay. No, it okay. could be part, uh, callable in part. Okay. So in the 80s, interest was at 18%, and that was really a disaster for every business and everything that walked. But say in 10 years that happened again, what happens to the bond holder? I mean, the people that put the money into the bond, can they cash them out? and? Yeah. It what? could, but if that was the interest rate environment, their bonds would be selling for a significant discount. Okay. In face value. So they still that, would. That would be their concern and not yours. Right. And, and they would want you to call the bonds and retire them, but you probably wouldn't. <laughs> I doubt because it. Because <laughs> the refinancing really wouldn't make any sense mm -hmm. at that point. But uh, yeah, they bear the, the interest the risk uh, or... interest rate risk going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are fixed rate obligations and that those rates, as Mr. Horton described, would be established at the time the bonds are priced, which if the council elects to go forward tonight would probably occur in the next four to six weeks, I would say. Probably the sooner the better, considering rates seem to be trending up. So I, I think it's, you know, the discussion is about the projects that this is going to cover, which are all things that our community is really waiting for and things that our community has said that is they are needed in, in, the, in the city. So some very good projects are being funded. Yes, Mr. Pratt. I just want to say this looks very advantageous to the city, unless there's something included here that I'm not saying. It seems like we're kind of striking while the iron is hot, mm -hmm. and it's probably a, a good time to go forward with this because of those rates. Any other comments? The only question I, I have is, are any of these bonds going to be available to the local public? Uh, yes, Council Member Garrison, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, the bonds would be available to local retail investors. Uh, at times, we have run advertisements in the paper, uh, just alerting uh, citizens for the communities that we represent that these bonds are being planned to be brought to market and would be available. They're in denominations of $5,000, which is the typical amount of a municipal bond. Um, they are tax-free. Uh, both state and federal income tax, but because of that, the yield is quite low. Uh, so, you know, uh, the attraction for folks to buy a 10-year bond yielding, you know, 2.5% or 2.7% might be limited as compared to institutions that 
that are like mutual funds that have money to invest in tax-free bonds, and that's their that's their mandate to take investor money in to buy these to buy these bonds. So principally, the investors are institutional investors, but uh, any any local interest in the bonds and demand can be satisfied as well. I know the uh, the Cottonwood Oak Creek School District when they got their last bond they. Uh, because of the public asking for it, made sure that a certain, a certain percentage of those were made available to the local community. And it seems like that percentage was snapped up within a couple of hours. So it, it's always nice to give your constituents a way to, to invest in their community and reap a little bit of reward for taking that gamble. So Absolutely. And the school district is a client of ours, so we could certainly do that again for the city. Thank you. Madam Mayor, yes. I can just add for, for you and the council, just reminding you that, that this resolution does contain an emergency clause, so it requires a three-quarters vote, not of the members present, but of the members impaneled. Um, and there are six of you here and, and seven on the council, so it will require five and a quarter of you um, to approve this. Don't I count for like two? <laughs> Don't I count for the quarter? <laughs> Okay, so I would like to um, ask members of the public for their thoughts and comments. If anybody would like to speak on this item. Is it time Mr. For Pratt, a motion? Please. It's a long one. <clears throat> I move to approve resolution number 2793 approving the sale and execution and delivery of not to exceed $18 million aggregate principal amount of pledged revenue obligations, evidencing a proportionate interest of the owners thereof in a purchase agreement, approving the form and authorizing the execution of del and delivery of such purchase agreement and other necessary related agreements, instruments and documents, delegating authority to determine certain matters and terms with respect to the foregoing, adopting post-issue tax compliance and continuing disclosure compliance procedures, authorizing the taking of all other actions necessary to the consumption of the transactions contemplated by this resolution and declaring an emergency. So con consumption might be consummation? Consummation. Consummation. Did I say consumption? Consummation. Okay. And um, Madam Mayor, for the record, this was Bond Council's fault. <laughs> so um, I would second that. So Mr. Pratt made the motion. The mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Mayor, would you make a record of the, the number of affirmative votes? Yes. So for the record, uh, we have six members here, and it would require all six of us um, to have this pass because that's the supermajority requirement. So if you, um, for the, the deputy clerk to take a, a show of hands, please. I, sorry, the statute says eyes and nose. Eyes and nose. Oh, okay. So uh, Mr. Pratt, I or I. Mr. Dowling? Aye. Mr. Aye. Linsky? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. Deputy Clerk, please read resolution number 2793 by title only. Yeah. Resolution number 2793, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, approving the form and authorizing the execution and delivery of a first purchase agreement, a first trust agreement, a continuing disclosure undertaking and obligation purchase contract, and other necessary agreements, instruments, and documents approving the sale and execution of delivery of not to exceed 18 million aggregate principal amount of the pledged revenue obligations evidencing a proportionate interest of the owners thereof in the purchase agreement, delegating authority to the mayor, manager, and finance director of the city to determine certain matters and terms with respect to the foregoing, foregoing 
adopting post-issuance tax compliance, <coughs> continuing disclosure compliance procedures in connection with issuance of obligations of the city, authorizing the taking of all other actions necessary to the consumption of transactions contemplated by the resolution and declaring an emergency. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, and just to let Lana know that after the next item, we'll move um, another item up so you don't have to stay all night. Okay, so the next item is final approval of a new logo for the city. Mr. Rooney. Madam Mayor, City Council, staff, citizens of Cottonwood, uh, I am here today to ask that you um, approve uh, this logo that you see in front of you today. We reviewed this uh, at the last work session, and I was asked to bring it to, uh, to, the, to the City Council. So here I am today asking for your support. It's been, uh, as you all know, a long, drawn-out process, and we've uh, gotten a lot of citizen um, interaction and, and involvement and asked for their input, and we came up with a lot of different designs along the way, and uh, this is the one that, uh, that we've come up with. You see in front of you my business card. That's what it would look like on a... Uh, uh, city business card, the logo, and then the other eight and a half by 11 that I gave to you, is, you'll see the logo down at the bottom. That's going to go to um, Green Living Magazine. That'll go in the next edition. And it's, uh, you know, we got the sustainable, the 2015 Arizona Sustainable Economic Growth City of the Decade Award and it's going into Green Living Magazine, which is all about sustainability and promoting Cottonwood and Old Town. So that is what we have before you. I ask for your support and approval of this logo, and um, the ball is in your court. <laughs> Mr. Pratt? Yeah, we, we have spent a lot of time on this, and um, you know the, the logo that the, the public didn't like, I. I uh, actually missed that meeting because I was at an award ceremony at the college and when I woke up the next morning and saw it in the paper, I knew right away that was not going to, <laughs> I, was, I was quite surprised by it. Um, but on this one, I've heard nothing but good things. Um, people are happy to have the river back, the cottonwood tree back. It's much more aesthetically pleasing, represents who we are. So I commend you for all your work and your ability to be flexible and take direction from us. And, I think we've finally arrived at a logo. I have not taken any offense to any of this. Yeah, well, you know, I know. It's just, uh, yep. it is what it is, and we went through the process. You've worked well with us. So Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. You. Any other comments from the council? We've had lots and lots of meetings, and, mm -hmm. yep. and OK, so I would open up the floor to the public to comment. The public's been with us right along throughout this process, and uh, they haven't been shy about sharing how they felt about things. And we've appreciated that input because I think it helped us come up with something better that I really like. So I think so. And if you look really close underneath the tree on the hill, there's a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> dead horse, state park. Kidding. There's not. I'm just joking. 
Is that sitting <laughs> underneath the grapevine? I would say you could probably imagine lots of different things. And, you know, the fact is, is that this was a very long process with a lot of community members involved. And we went through this whole branding thing. And the logo is just a little piece of it. And this logo, um, you know, it's, it's for everything that we care about. It's for hang gliding. It's for paragliding. It's for um, hiking, biking, canoeing. There's, you know, any slick magazine that, and slick by I mean, that's what they call them, right? Because of, of the quality of the paper. But um, this can go on anything that happens in the Verde Valley to promote that event. It doesn't have to be about wine. But it's just that you couldn't get a hundred things on one logo. So, Mr. Eaton, did you have a comment? It's interesting to me when we have uh, people... You, you'll have to come up because of our television participation. They won't be able to hear you. I just want to say it's been really fascinating for me to see people come in from uh, all places around Arizona to come to Old Town Center for the Arts and from all over the country. And they, uh, what they express about the character of this location, I think this logo really speaks to this. There's something that they feel, and it starts with the river, you know, to have that uh, iconic symbol in there, and it's one of the few healthy rivers in the United States, North America continent. So to honor that and have that really up front in the logo, and, and, and of course the, the tree symbol, I think, it, I think it's, personally, it's really evolved to a, a good place. Thank you very much. And I do, I love the river, it's very beautiful. And it's prominent in the logo. And of course the tree too. So um, any other comments from members of the council? Mr. Pratt? I was going to move, I move to approve the new city logo design as proposed. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion, the vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Right on, we got Great there. job, Mr. Rooney. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, does anybody else need the projector? If not, I'll turn it off. Uh, does anybody else have a presentation coming up? Okay. You may turn it off. So I would like to move up the special event liquor license application on number five, submitted by Lana Tollison, applicant for the Cottonwood Chamber of Commerce for a chamber mixer scheduled for May 21st, 2015 at 830 South Main Street, Suite 1H. Is there any discussion on this item? Is that one that you need yeah. to? I'm just, just walk up. <laughs> Ed D. Clerk, and what about, you're not on the board anymore, right, Mr. No. Pratt? So you can stay. OK, so the vice mayor declares a conflict. Um, I would enter any comments from the public on this item. If not, I'd entertain a motion, please. I'll move to uh, approve the recommend approval of the special event liquor license application submitted by Lana Tollison for the Chamber of Commerce for a mixer scheduled May 21st, 2015. I'd second that. Um, Mr. Elinsky made the motion. The mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item is approval of possible cost increase for well five pump motor and check valve replacement. And we have Mr. Biggs with us this evening to help answer questions about the item. Madam Mayor, Council, oh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, the original bid for the uh, well five rehabilitation project came in at $38,455.22. Um, this project started yesterday. Once we get the structure out of the ground and laying on the ground, uh, yeah, inspection revealed that we needed another 370 feet of new pipe. That was not part of the original bid. The cost for that pipe is $14,379.25, that puts us over the $50,000 threshold. Uh, for a total of uh, $52,834.47. Uh, we were afraid there were gonna be other items, but uh, it looks as those, uh, looks as like those items are gonna be able to be reused. And 
Save us a good deal of money in the long run. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Have to keep the water in the faucets. We're trying. <laughs> it's a good week to do it, a nice cool week. Okay, any comments from the public on this item? So, Madam Mayor, with yes. that new information, the council may want to confer with Roger about whether to, to dial down the, because the, the motion's presented as an additional $50,000 over the uh, original 38. So it, I guess it depends upon how comfortable Roger is and, and if you could lower that cap or are inclined to. So you're saying that it's a total of 52 now, not 38 plus 50? Correct. Okay. Total of 52,834,47 plus tax. Okay. What's what's that number? Fifty-two thousand eight hundred thirty-four dollars and forty-seven cents. So I would entertain a motion. I move to authorize the expend expenditure of up to. $52,834.47 plus tax for the well five pump motor and check valve replacement. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. The vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Go and fix pumps. <laughs> Okay, the next item is the Red Rock Skydiving Proposed Extension of Short-Term Ground Lease at the Cottonwood Airport. Mr. Mr. Morgan, I was going to say, but it's got to be Mr. Scott, right? It happens all the time. No <laughs> Madam Mayor, member of the, members of the council, you'll remember that towards the end of last year, we brought to the council the uh, Red Rock Skydiving Lease was going to expire December of last year. We went to council for direction. Council directed us to move forward with a new lease for one year extension, giving them an opportunity to um, conduct a few things with their business. Um, we've been working with our attorney on drafting that lease. It was actually April 1st of this year before we were able to bring that lease back before the airport commission. The airport commission went ahead and suggested that the council renew that lease. While we were working on bringing that lease to the council, uh, on April 15th, make sure I get that correct, April 15th, we received a letter from an airport user uh, with a complaint about Carl Priggy. Um, I won't go into details about the letter. It's in your packet, but basically Mr. Priggy made a few statements in this letter, a few alleged statements, I should state, in this letter. Um, based on that letter, Chairman Mo Jim Money with the Airport Commission requested that it go back in front of the Airport Commission to see if this would change their mind. Staff agreed because we didn't want to bring this back to the council. The council asked how would this impact the Airport Commission's opinion. So we did bring that back. We held an emergency meeting of the Airport Commission last Thursday morning at 10 a.m. The commission did suggest to move forward with the lease, the one-year lease, and now we're bringing this to the city council to see where the city council wants to go with this. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pratt? Yeah, I've got a question. Considering the uh, commission's concerns and the incidents that happened, I was then surprised to see that they recommend continuing the lease. Do you know the, the grounds for that recommendation? I know that Jim Money is here if we wanted to ask That him would be about. terrific. Mr. Money, please. Jim Money, uh, Chairman of the Airport Commission. What was the question again? Well, Mr. I, you know, I was reading about the Airport Commission's concerns and the incidents that happened, and this is kind of a, a repeat of things that had happened in the past, which wasn't supposed to happen. And then when I saw that the Commission did recommend extending the contract to the end of 2015. I wondered what the grounds for that recommendation were, considering the Commission's concerns. Uh, this is a very troubling event, uh, and it caused a great deal of concern. There was a lot of discussion about it, um, and the majority of the Commission decided to, uh, to follow Mr. Morgan's, uh, Mr. Scott's lead uh, with recommending it to you. Yeah, and do you know the grounds for that recommendation? Considering this is kind of repeatable. Not that I can bring to mind. We, there was a lot of, lot of discussion back and forth and uh, positive grounds, no. Uh, a great deal of disappointment uh, 
was expressed by the commission. It's deja vu all over again. Uh, yeah. And I personally feel we need to draw a line. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought, and I think most of the people in the council agree with me, we were quite generous last time and said, okay, we're going to renew this for a year, but we can't have incidents like this happening again. Um, and I then agree. when they did, I was quite disappointed. I was too, and I agree with you completely. Um, but what the uh, commission ruled, the commission ruled. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, council, any more questions or comments on the item? It appears to be a, you know, cut and dry, except that we haven't heard from right, Mr. Pergee. Right, I was going so. to call them next. So, um, members of the public have asked to speak. We have a form filled out by Rick Evans and Sharon Priggy. So if Rick would come up, Rick Evans, please. I wouldn't mind giving her an opportunity to speak, but my name is Rick Evans. I'm and a, she uh, will get a chance. <laughs> uh, my name is Rick Evans. I'm a uh, airport user for the last 15 years. I uh, am a skydiver of almost 25 years, a USPA member. Um, I was a com competition level skydiver regionally and nationally for a number of years in the 90s. I've traveled extensively all over the United States, jumping at uh, largest facilities all the way down to small one airport operations like we have here. Um, I've seen good facilities and I've seen bad facilities. I've seen facilities that once I got there I wouldn't have gotten on their airplanes or utilized their equipment for fear of my own safety. Uh, in the 15 years of skydiving here on the Cottonwood Airport, we've been through three owners, uh, some better than others. And I have to say, from my personal background, that this is one of, if not the best, single airplane operation I've ever been at in anywhere in the United States. And I'm lucky to have this facility in my own backyard. Literally, can watch the parachutes come down from my backyard. Uh, skydive. Uh, Sorry, Red Rock Skydiving uh, attracts thousands of people to Cottonwood from all over the world, all over the state. People that travel from Tucson passing every other facility in the state, which I've jumped at, uh, for one purpose, to enjoy what you just put up here on the board with your city logo and your comments about the, the Verde Valley, where they're familiar with Sedona, they're familiar with the Red Rocks and they want to see them from the air, and they want to experience them from this airport. Few of the people that I meet at Red Rock Skydiving have ever heard of Cottonwood prior to making their reservation. They didn't come here planning to do a wine tour or experience Old Town. They came here to see the Red Rocks from the air and make a skydive, check something off their bucket list. Um, about 99% of the time, people that come and visit, they get done with their skydive, they're all jazzed up, and they're like, what do we do next? And they're usually guided down into Old Town to various restaurants. We ask them what they want to do. Most of them just had planned on heading over to Sedona. Um, kind of scattered down some notes here briefly. This facility has a long-term safety record. Carl and Sharon have a commitment to safety, even at the expense of their own profits. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been there where they've turned people away because they either arrived after being down in Old Town and having a couple of cocktails, uh, various other reasons, weather. They're not one to push the limits. They're 100% they're behind safety. I noted on the form that I was in favor of this agenda item, but after reading the lease during the uh, previous sessions, I'm not sure how I could be in favor of a short-term lease such as this. I mean, how can any business that wants to provide any kind of a service out of the airport succeed with such a short-term lease? If you had a, an uh, airplane operator that wanted to come in here, they would never go with a month-to-month -month or a year-to-year -year lease. They'd want a long-term, five-year, ten-year lease so they can lay down their roots, make plans. You know, this is not a cheap operation. 
I'm going out on a limb. I have no idea how much they have invested here, but I would venture to say if I wanted to open a facility at this airport today, it would cost me at least a quarter of a million dollars, if not more, to put in what they have. In preparation to this, I attended the airport commission, in which I believe Mr. Money voted in favor. I never even heard opposition. I heard condescending comments and the like. I feel that after reading the previous minutes of the airport commission and the, of the city council, that Carl has at times been unfairly villainized by bringing up items that really had no bearing on the situation. Just because police were called for somebody who was throwing items on the airport, which he just reported in the city's best interest, it now circumvents around to when the lease comes up that that's just one more incident in which Carl Priggy was involved with police at the airport. So even when acting in the city's best interest, he's villainized. So why would he then, at this last alleged incident, want to get the city involved when he could go and address the person one-on-one. -on -one. I know from a fact that when Carl is moved to make any comment to anybody about anything, whether it's a skydiver doing something on the airport or something else, it's in the interest of safety. The other person's safety, the safety of other airport operators on the airport, and that's pretty much all I have to say to that effect. I appreciate your time. I would just wish that you would look at a longer term solution to this situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Sharon Priggy. My name is Sharon Priggy. I'm the owner of Red Rock Skydiving. I uh, represent my uh, co-owner, Carl Priggy, um, about this letter from this power paraglider, uh, comical at best. Um, we had asked uh, Morgan Scott for a copy of that letter so we know exactly how to defend ourselves and he refused to give us a copy. Um, basically, Mr. Priggy said, you're breaking FARs, took pictures, turned and walked away. Um, <clears throat> on that note, I do want to talk about the lease. Um, well, I do want to mention one other thing about that uh, power, power paraglider and how interesting it was that the police report was done from the Public Works Department and in that letter he did mention that he was told to call the police and say he was threatened when the police actually said he wasn't threatened to me. That's just a waste of police resources. Um, there was nothing wrong. Freedom of speech, Carl can say what he needs to say. He did not threaten. He did not say he was the owner of the airport. He didn't say anything like that. Um, so I think freedom of speech, I think he had the right to say that. Um, on the lease here, um, I have a couple issues that I really wanted to bring to your attention tonight after looking at it. Exhibit 1 is missing, completely blank. There's nothing there. Um, November 18th, you did mention that this was going to be a one-year lease. It's currently only till December 31st. This is May. That's not really a one-year lease. Um, it also gives you, the, you, the landlord, the ability to, um, to terminate us with a 30-day um, 30 days advance notice. Um, that's more of a month-to-month a -month agreement, not really a lease. Um, I have a question on the lease rate. Is it due monthly? Is it due quarterly? There's a thing in here about late payments. I know last time it was brought up to that we were late on payments. Yes, we were late on a couple of payments. However, we did pay our late fee, as was in that lease. And if we had to, um, we would do it here as per the, per the agreement that was signed with the city of Cottonwood. So not once did we step outside of the bounds of that last, um, that last lease that we had. Um, on page six, we've got the city wanting to, um, not taking any responsibility, any percent, percentage of responsibility at all. Um, number seven, there's proprietary information that you're wanting. Exhibit two is our waiver. Um, your lawyer that you hired down in the Phoenix area had said that he would put in there, in the lease here, <clears throat> that we would have the, what do you say, um, that the client may revise the waiver as required by insurance or as provided under law without that being a breach. Uh, that's not in here. 
You're also telling me how to do my business, what forms to use, things like that, all proprietary information. The insurance um, is not specific. A lot of times skydivers can't get insurance. Ask any skydiver. We have the maximum that we can. We have always provided that. Um, and I apologize if anybody cannot, um, hasn't gotten that straight. Um, and I'd be more than happy to sit down with anybody, get the exact thing in there, get my, my insurance agent on, whatever, to make sure that we have that insurance because we have it. Trust me, I pay a lot for that insurance every year. Um, page 10, number 12. Um, you also want my contractors to get insurance. If I can't get it, they can't get it either. Um, I'm trying to go quickly here because I know we are short on time. Um, page 13, under default remedies, um, you, it says here that you can order me to cease and desist if I don't have that insurance. Again, that needs to be clarified, specified exactly what insurance that needs to be. Uh, page 14, the landlord may cancel this lease and declare all rights of tenant ended, period, done. That's an open-ended contract. That's not a lease at all. Um, and also, number two talks about the landlord may enter upon the premises. I just want to make, make it clear that this is a land lease, not a building lease. This building is mine. Um, it's just specific to the land this um, lease is. And um, we go on to um, the very last page, number um, R. Again, proprietary information. You're wanting to see my records and my contractor's records, my books and things like that. Um, I don't think that's information that the city of Cottonwood really needs to see is my business information. There's a lot more items in here, but um, I was trying to pull out just those that were most serious. Um, and as uh, Rick Evans had mentioned, a lot of those police reports did not pertain to us. Um, the last one was a hang glider. If you'll notice, it was the same hang glider. It wasn't over and over a different hang glider, same hang glider, 2013. This last incident with the power paraglider, I recommend you read that letter again and the police report. Um, also, we have pictures and stuff to back up our support of breaking FARs. Um, on that note, I would like to reserve the right to speak again just in case because I do want to make sure that my business is defended here. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from council? Um, Tom Pender, please. Mayor, Council, Tom Pender, uh, live here in Cottonwood, also have an airplane based here at the uh, airport. Uh, one thing I can tell you about it, uh, Carl, is uh, he's passionate about his job and that and what he's doing up there and, and the things that uh, I've experienced from him. And he's the type of guy that you want on the airport. Uh, I've had uh, things come up where he didn't have to be involved, but he came over and lent a hand. He, he did good things for me. Uh, as for these paragliders, uh, I've seen them. I've been out there. I've landed when they've been on the airport. Uh, do they follow our rules? No. So if Carl pointed out that they didn't follow our rules, he's probably just doing us all a favor because they don't, they don't use proper pattern procedures. They are not notifying people. They're just flying around town, having a good time. And when I'm coming in at 150 knots and he's cruising along at about 35 miles an hour, I can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, and if he's in the pattern and I don't see him, uh, it's going to be pretty bad. So, you know, Carl is passionate. Um, uh, maybe uh, a little too passionate on some of the things, but at the end of the day, he's a businessman that brings a lot of credibility to the airport. And right now, uh, what I've experienced, I've been up here for 15 years flying out of this airport, and upwards about, I guess it's been about five years now we've had the commission that's been there. What I've seen is the airport be systematically tore apart. Uh, seven or eight years ago, we used to all sit around on Saturday mornings, drink coffee, talk about the good times, had a lot of air, uh, pilots come in. The commission came on board. Um, there's been some uh, personality conflicts up there that were related to issues that were going on. The, and our airport's not as friendly as it used to be. I really miss being able to go up there and sit down with all the rest of the pilots and have a coffee on Saturday morning, maybe some donuts and talk about our what we've flown around and done. So quite honestly, uh, Carl's uh, hanging on and trying to do the right thing. And I think that, uh, you know, certainly uh, his passion has created some problems for him. Uh, contracts are difficult. I know that. I deal with contracts all the time. And there's always two sides to the story there. 
I would just hope that you would give him an opportunity to uh, work these issues out because he is an asset. If you need something and you're on that airport, he's going he's gonna to give it to you if he's got a, the ability to do it. And that we don't have that much more anymore. It used to be you could walk by any hangar and the people would be inside and talk to you about whatever or help you out or hand you, uh, hand you uh, just like uh, John Altizer did the other day. I needed some brake fluid. He just handed it to me, you know. That's, that's what it used to be like, and we're losing that. And Carl's trying to keep that alive for us up there. And it's an important part of this community. I can tell you that, uh, and you can go look at pictures and maybe even look at how many airport or airplanes were based here in Cottonwood eight years ago and how many are based there now. There's a big difference. I really, uh, I think that, uh, you know, passion, we, you can't find anybody with more passion. He does a safe job. I fly in and out. Their uh, pilots, or, or when Carl's flying, they're conscientious. We all talk. We all, we all are communicating. It's the folks that are not conscientious and are not following the rules that are causing us some problems up there. And then the commission itself, just by the virtue or the nature of it, has, uh, I think, dis divided the airport a little bit. And I'm really, uh, I guess, I'm sad about that because there's a bunch of great people up there that are sometimes at odds that, that never used to be at odds, and it's because of this commission. So, you know, I think we need to consider maybe uh, getting back to the old way of dealing with the airport. I know that there's, there's some issues that need to be addressed, but it should be nice to be able to sit down up there on Saturday morning and discuss our problems instead of having to bring it here in front of the city council. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And we have Dylan, is it Fights or Fright? Fright? Freelitz. Felix. 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 <clears throat> Felix. Okay, that's an I. Thank you, Mayor and City mm -hmm. Council. Um, I'm going to bring something. I was out flying four days after the initial report. The initial report was on the 15th in regards to safety with the paraglider and Red Rock skydiving. Four days later on the 19th, I was out flying for several hours, and <coughs> there was a safety issue for sure, and it was on the paraglider's <clears throat> paraglider side. I was taxiing out. He was on the blast pad, the display threshold right there, setting up his kite in the letter. It says he remains clear of the runway, not on the runway. He's setting up there. People are coming down. I landed, and he goes going down the runway, the takeoff, either for takeoff or landing. Let me catch my breath, sorry. Takeoff or landing, he goes mobbing down the runway without any paraglider, any chute. I just landed. He goes, it looked like a go kart, and somebody was on short final. Coming in for a landing over DDB, coming in, I don't know how fast they were, but it was a <clears throat> experimental, and he likes to come in a little fast. So that right there, sorry about that, cuts the, the distance down, the time, and <clears throat> sorry about that. So he's going down on the go-kart without the parachute. This guy I had to get on and tell him that there appears to be a go-kart on the runway. Like, be careful, don't hit this guy. Because if he would have been going full throttle down that, hit him, we would have had two people dead at least. That he was not intending to take off or landing. That's why we have taxiways, so you don't come in front of a plane taking off or landing, potentially killing people. It's a serious safety issue on his part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any other comments, Mr. Pratt? You know, it, it, it appears to me, and I'm not a, a pilot, but it appears to me we do have issues with different types of aircraft sharing the same airspace and possibly endangering not just our citizens, but people from outside our community who fly in here. And, um, I think maybe we need to revisit that and look at how we are mixing those different types. And maybe that's not a good place for the parachutists to land and the, the uh, hang gliders. And, but Sounds can, to we, me. can we tell them they can't? I mean, isn't this ruled by the FAA and everyone has a right to use the airport? I, I uh, there's, there's a couple different issues going on. Yes, every, we've checked this with our aviation attorney. Everyone has a right to use the airport. Um, this um, paraglider has a right to use the airport. He does not have a right to be done running down the runway without a parachute. That's absolutely not allowed. Uh, he's been spoken to about that. Um, but he does have the right to use the airport. So we are playing on a kind of a difficult situation here and that yes he has the right to use the airport no he does not have the right to do some of the things that he was doing um, we were actually we requested a 
statement from Mr. Priggy asking, what, what did you see? Because as of today, all we have is his statements of what, saying what he said, that this is the paraglider. So again, if we knew more, we'd be able to ask him, can you correct these situations as of today? We, we don't know what happened other than his version of this story. So but maybe, yes, he does have the right to use here. Maybe we need a better way to enforce what's going on up there, but it really does. I mean, I can't imagine that Mr. Pender here is going to stand up there and tell a story or young Mr. Felix and that they are concerned about people's safety, including their own, and that's, that's a legitimate concern, and I think we need to look at it. And are we not going to write a policy for some of that? No? Madam Mayor, I... I think most of what we're talking about on the on the active part of the airport is, is governed by the FAA. FAA. Um, oh. so we already we, have a policy. This is this is a discussion about a proprietary matter, a ground lease, and, and a tenant. We're we're not talking about. We may be talking about the, the business's profitability to the extent that, that the leasing ground that's proximate to the airport, but this has nothing to do with their ability to be on the airport or operate a skydiving business, although um, we are working on developing a, a comprehensive set of commercial standards and, and requirements for all commercial operations at the airport. Okay. And, and Madam Mayor, I, I don't think everybody's concerned about the, the safety issues and ensuring that our airport is safe as possible. The question is, when we have a safety issue, is how is it handled? Uh, we have a, an airport manager who's tasked with monitoring the airport, and he's the one that should be addressing these safety issues if they're reported to him. And he has access to the FAA. He has access to the police department. And, um, you know, the city is probably best prepared to deal with this so that personalities don't get involved in these issues. Mr. Garrison? I got nothing to say. I think um, I have the last minutes that I asked the city clerk to give me, and you were quite prolific with your comments in the last meeting yeah, nothing, about this. Nothing's changed as far as I'm concerned. It's just another example of the reason why we need to move on. Um, I understand passion. I understand uh, wanting to be in there and support your business and support the use of the facility and I think the airport is a underutilized asset of this community and, and uh, I fully support anything we can do to, to make it a better example of, of what's right with aviation in Arizona and I'd like to see more use of that airport than it gets currently but that's a whole different argument than what we're here dealing with which is a specific user and the continual misuse of their rights as it pertains to the space and so that's really what we're here dealing with and um, we uh, as a group last time decided to give direction to staff to create a uh, a better contract so that uh, we could move forward with uh, some better terms and conditions on how that uh, space would be used. It sounds like that contract from what we heard from Ms. Pricky has some some issues with it. I do um, I haven't read through it as well as she has. I haven't dealt with lawyers on it like she has but I did see did hear some issues in there that maybe we're asking for a little too much in, in what we're how we're dealing with them in that contract but uh, in its intent, I think the idea was to create a document that was not only usable for the Priggies, but for any other uh, commercial user that would move into that uh, space and utilize our facility. And so I think the idea is that we're trying to create something that protects not only the, uh, the city, but also the tenant as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, we didn't resolve the issue. The issue was to give another chance, uh, create a uh, time for things to get better and less aggressive on this space and it isn't happening and uh, I just don't see how in increasing the term of this contract is going to make that uh, variable change any more than it already has. It's just a repetitive uh, 
problem and it's it, I don't think it's going to correct itself and I don't think the contract's going to correct it so uh, moving down the road any further is just prolonging the problem <coughs> Any other Madam comments? May, may I just uh, add something for the councils? Just a reminder: this the the lease itself has been shared with two attorneys for Red Rock Skydiving, um, and and we've not heard a any comments back to point out. So uh, it it it's a little it's a little sudden and hard, I think, for for anybody, the council especially, to respond to uh, at that level of detail because this lease has been circulated and, and shared with the, the vendors uh, and they've had it for some months. No, and all my comment was just she had some very specific issues with that and I was hoping that we're going to have a record of that and, and those could be looked at a little bit more yeah. so, but I, I, do hear, I did hear some very specific issues she had with the contract and I would assume that any business person probably would also, so I just was hoping you were taking notes on her concerns so that we could make sure that was vetted out in the next version. Mary, please. I'll be very Arkish. Yes. Thank you for letting me speak or actually ask a question. My name is Mary Arkish. I own the Girona Java Cafe. And as a fellow business, small business person, I'm just real confused. <laughs> and obviously, I don't know from the beginning why it is that you want to kick this business out of Cottonwood. <clears throat> it makes no sense. Uh, you may have some disagreements. You may have some debate. But I don't think, especially after hearing what these two people just said, that you would continue to kick these people out. I don't understand, but Thank you know, you. I've missed a lot on the earlier end, but certainly that we're, and I will say as a small business person, we are dodging bullets every day. No pun intended, but we are dealing with, you know, daggers and bullets all the time. Um, what Carl may, like uh, Mr. Pender said, what, if Carl was passionate at some point, he probably has a million other things going on in layers and onion skins of that day. So I don't know how you guys can't come together and sit down and figure out how to mutually get them to stay in our community, because I think they're an asset. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Linsky? I, I agree that Red Rock skydiving is an asset. And I think that Carl Priggy runs a, a good business. I think his customers are very loyal, and I'm sure that he's passionate about safety. But we're not kicking his business out of Cottonwood. We're discussing a land lease, and we have a tenant who has a, a record, frankly, a police record of being very passionate to the point of, of bullying. And so what we're really discussing tonight is do we want to have a tenant who's occupying citizen-owned land uh, that exhibits that behavior. He certainly has as much right as any other person to use the airport today and, and tomorrow. If, even beyond this land lease, he still has a right to use the airport and to run his business in Cottonwood. Can I readdress them? I, I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but I'm going to do it. Is there, you know, you're, you're basing um, obviously situations that he might have overreacted and, and I'm not sure exactly what they were, but first of all, was anybody in danger? Was he concerned more about the danger of people? And you know, when that happens, people do get passionate. They, they get, you know, I remember the first time my little two-year-old ran out in traffic in a parking lot. I went nuts. And somebody else might have thought I was, you know, um, being my child. I wasn't. I was concerned about safety. And Carl maybe, 
you know, have been acting that way, and I don't know about bullying, I can certainly tell you that I have used <clears throat> phrases and saying things in an inappropriate way. I am guilty of that. You know, but we're talking sometimes about life and death. So I, I don't know. Okay. So because this has been an ongoing conversation, is it possible that staff could get together and answer some of those questions because we've been through it for different meetings and and there are probably things that staff could discuss with you that we don't have time to go through tonight, but your your points are well taken. Right. Yeah. And I'd like to clarify something for the record. Your words that we are trying to kick them out of town, no one's trying to kick them out of town. I, I really want to stress that. Nobody is trying to do that. We're just discussing situations and things that have gone on. And I don't see anything in the agenda that says we want to remove them. The, that's that's the not on the agenda. Was, if the lease was um, taken away for the land, they would have to leave. Okay. okay. But nobody's trying to do that. Well, okay. can I, I'll just start with you. I think I asked this question. You, you know, I just want to clarify this. Trust me, I think if you guys remember from the last meeting, I was kind of conflicted about it, but I was very much, Mr. Rose is back there. I, I know him, and I very much was f advocating for keeping business here. But I want to clarify that um, that location is not exclusive. If they were to walk across the street and have the building there, they could do their pre-meetings. They could drive across the street to the airport in a van or whatever they wanted to do get into an airplane and do the exact same procedure they're doing right now, if I'm not mistaken. But so, so I just want to clarify that, that it might not be as convenient, but the business practice could still take place. And I, I just want to try and, because I've been going through that in my head, and I'm not saying kick them off, I just want to clarify that, that, that it, you know, a public airport is a frustrating thing because you've got the public, and the public is generally frustrating in some cases. Um, so, you know, uh, nobody here, if anything, everybody here is, is uh, help us help you. You know, the last time this, this came up, I said, okay, we need to try and work something out. We need to try and make sure they know they have a place to do business going forward, and we'll try and come up with a contract that we can all deal with and accept. Um, you know, and I know that looking at specifics in, in, looking at specific situations after the fact can lend itself to, to looking at it either way depending on which which end of the situation you're on um, but there was a, sort of a history there and whether or not the whether or not the interactions are deemed valid by us we weren't in the situation but you know people get passionate tempers flare and you know no yeah nobody's gotten hurt yet but I think that some people have been concerned, and um, it's difficult when I say, yeah, I want to keep this, I want to make it work, and then it, it kind of, there is a certain liability for the city if we say, well, let's try it one more time, and then let's say the next guy isn't as amicable as the first guy, <laughs> or, you know, let's say Carl walks out there one day to try and make a good point with something and comes up against a guy that has a very short temper and is equally as passionate. And we end up with uh, with an injury on the uh, if we end up with an injury, that's on the city. If we let that proceed and we said, okay, stay out there, stay passionate, and keep interacting, and you know we've had several a few times now when we've kind of said, hey, there's a problem. Let's try and dial that back a little bit. Let's not have a direct confrontation. Let's go to the you know let's go through the channels to try and avoid person to person conflict, and we're trying to do that and. We sort of ended up here again. So it's equally as frustrating for me when I want to encourage local business to be here. When I say, you know, you guys are fantastic at what you do, and I say, let's let, let's climb, let's let's jump this hurdle and keep moving ahead. We've jumped the hurdle, we've moved ahead, and then I flip open the paper and I, I read this article and I just go, darn it, you know, I really want this to work. I really want it to work, and I can want it to work all day long. I can do everything in my power to ensure that Mr. Priggy has a chance to run his business and do all the good stuff. But that only counts for so much because I'm not out there mediating the conflict. 
You know, I could go sit there all day long and wait for somebody to come through and have a problem and say, hold on, hold on, wait, let's talk this out or we'll just go sit down for a minute and I'll try and figure it out. I can't do that. And, you know, it, it's frustrating for me because I, everybody up here wants local business. Everybody here says we need a good industry. We need stuff. We, we need this local business. It is essential to us. So it kills us when we're trying to keep local business and then we sort of keep stubbing our toe on the same thing. And I, you know, I feel really bad about it, that we're trying to make it work, we're trying to make it work, but it, it gets very difficult. And, you know, I get passionate about trying to make everybody happy. You can't do that. You can just do the best you can for everybody. And I would sure hate for Mr. Priggy to get assaulted by somebody when he's being passionate. And so I, I have to sort of think about more than just Mr. Priggy or more than myself. I have to think about the public. And the public may not know Mr. Priggy as well as we all do. They might not know how he acts, and it's, a, it's an unknown variable. But this unknown variable has shown itself to be known in different ways. Whether, and I can't, I wasn't in the situation, I can't vouch for it. But all we have to look at is records. And it's difficult when you're stuck kind of looking at records and, you know, trying to garner everything after the fact you know trust me, we don't want to get rid of you guys we don't want the business to leave we want everybody to do good business and make good money and be safe but there's you know there's a point at which i usually i tell my kids this it doesn't matter what you tell somebody it matters what they hear so if you walk up to them and you tell them something in a fashion that automatically shuts them down and makes them defensive everything you've said is useless if you walk up to them and you speak to them in a way that is a little bit more open and soft and explains what you're trying to do without the confrontation, with a little less passion, then that person might actually hear you and actually take in what you're saying. So that, that is kind of on every human to ensure that you, communi in communication, it's your responsibility to make sure that who's listening to you can understand you to a point. They need to listen to you as well, but there's a two-way street. It can't always be my way or the highway, and that can really, you know, that's kind of what we're running into is we're trying to keep things moving forward, and we're sort of running into roadblocks that are saying, no, that's not how it is, um, and it's just frustrating. And I'm, you know, I feel your frustration. I, I want this to be good and go forward, but it's very difficult. I have one more. Do you want to speak? I have one more. You want to speak first? Yeah, because very quick. I just, I was, <clears throat> obviously there's concerns and we're at a certain uh, crossroads, but I almost think I'm, I'm leaning now towards that we should, since the airport commission has recommended continuing that lease through December 31st, 2015, I think that's where we should go. But I think we also should again say, Mr. Priggy, you're going to speak up in matters of safety, but please do it with a little bit less passion so that everybody does get the message so there's not controversies. Because that doesn't do anyone any good. And we do appreciate your business. Chris Bull. Thank you, Terrence. Hi, my name is Chris Bull. I'm a uh, resident of Cottonwood. I own a house here. Um, um, thank you, uh, Mayor Jones and the council for listening to this. Um, I'm also a skydiver. Uh, I can almost say ex-skydiver. I just haven't skydived in quite some time now. But I still um, stay pretty passionate with what goes on at the airport. Uh, I'm an aircraft mechanic. I'm also a licensed rated uh, pilot. Um, however, I don't currently fly. Um, Listening to the uh, council and what they are suggesting for the Red Rock skydiving business, I'm, I'm kind of at odds, um, such as Mary is, as to understanding how, uh, as uh, Jesse uh, states, how this, uh, the actions of Carl are causing problems for Red Rock skydiving. Um, 
One thing, I'd, if you say to stay out of, of confrontation with people and so forth, if you see something happening, call 911 would be a good example, okay? A lot of people say that. Um, what is that, uh, how does that statement go about the, not, not to be dissing any police officers because they can't always be right there when you need them. But, you know, when seconds count, the police are minutes away. And, not, and that's a true statement and it's not to be mean or anything of the sort. That's just the way things are. Uh, unless you just happen to have lucky luck and you've got a policeman in your pocket and you can pull them out. Um, if, uh, or call Mr. Scott. Um, I guess it's Mr. Scott, right? So, okay. <laughs> I don't want to say some Morgan. Um, he's not a, he's not in your pocket either he can't be reached he's busy he's doing something and so forth and so forth this man out on the runway with this this particular thing let's just throw that aside let's say I'm a business owner let's say I'm I own what Mary owns and there's a man walking out in the street obstructing traffic Okay, now, this is, this goes to a person that's in the act of something at that particular time, that moment. Somebody's out there in the street. How many of you would just say, well, I'm just going to stand here. I'm not going to do anything. Well, I'll call 911. Hey, we got a guy, he's standing out in the street, and the cars are just about ready to run him over. Okay, we'll be on it. And so we'll just stand here and watch it. And my point is, at what point do you determine that maybe you or somebody should go out there and say, hey, you shouldn't be standing out here in the middle of the street, pal. You're going to get run over or you're going to cause something. And so my point is, is that Coral is in that kind of mode. He, he's representing, he's not... He's not really coming out there representing Skydive, uh, Red Rock Skydive, it used to be Skydive Arizona, uh, Cottonwood. It's been three different names, sorry. <laughs> so, um, he's not coming out there in a sense of saying, I am Red Rock Skydiving, you can't be out here on this airport doing this. He's coming out there saying, I see an infraction, I see something going on, it's happening right now, we need to do something with it now. And yes, maybe it would have worked to his advantage to had he just immediately got, I don't know if he did, got on the phone and called 911 as he's walking out there. And that, that way the police could be there to intervene if they could get there in time. They might be able to. There might be a police officer right nearby and you never know. But um, that's pretty much my point on, on um, whether or not I would say something to somebody. I own a house, so should I not get to have my, I, if I own a business like Mary, and, and now, now we're going to talk about, well, maybe we don't <coughs> want to renew your lease because you're out here telling people not to stand in the street. I don't know if you see my point there. Um, and also, uh, like you said, uh, he is, he's got every yeah, right the, to use the airport such as we do. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay, Mr. Garrison. Um, just to kind of get back to some of the comments that are coming out of the audience. This is, in my mind, this is a really simple issue. And it, it goes back to conduct and a code of conduct. And when this is a public facility, it's owned by the feds, it's owned by the state, it's owned by the citizens of Cottonwood. Everybody has the right to use that facility. And as users of that facility, as you are, as Mr. Pender, as Mr. Feliz, as Mr. Mooney, they have an expected code of conduct when you use those facilities and how you should act when you're on those facilities, just like anybody going to one of our public parks. But in this case, the Priggies have a contract with the city to utilize our land up there. In that contract is a contracted code of conduct that spells out exactly how you're supposed to maintain yourself 
and your business while you use city facilities. So I can't remember the last time I read about a police report of Mr. Pender getting into it with a skydiver at the airport or a ultralight or a paraglider or Mr. Feliz or Mr. Mooney. We have users up there that are in and out of the airport on a daily basis, not necessarily as impacted as Mr. Uh, Priggy is with his business, but they use that airport. That airport gets a lot of business, and I don't hear and we don't get reports on all these other users getting into fisticuffs or into confrontations, verbal or otherwise, with the users of that space. So when we have a contracted person using our property that continues to show a level of decorum that isn't acceptable in our eyes of what we expect a business to be when they use that facilities, we have to question whether we want to continue doing business with that party. He has full use of that airport. He can put his building across the street. He can come down here to Old Town and set up his school. We'd love to have him down here. And he can drive those people up there, put them in a plane, and skydive. We won't affect his business one bit by moving him off that airport. But we will affect the users of our property and how they, de how they behave in, in using our property. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Pratt, you had your hand up. No, I was pretty much going to say what Mr. Garrison said, and he said it for me. Thank you, Randy. Okay. So, Ms. Priggy? Just quickly, I would like to address a couple things on this letter that this is what this is based on. Yes, we had a hang glider incident in 2013. That was two years ago. This last letter that you, are, you all are in uproars about it's one side. I just told you our side. Carl Priggy walked up to him, and this is on camera. Carl Priggy walked up to him, said, you're breaking FARs, took pictures, and turned and left. And how ironic that this man showed up at this time doing this, runs to Morgan Scott. Morgan Scott, somebody tells him to call the police that he's been threatened. No one was threatened. The man has this long list of letters. I, I would be more than happy to sit down with each and every one of you and go over that line by line of what was wrong. He even came to, my, to the business and talked to me, and I spoke to him. I wasn't standoffish. I was busy. I'm running a business. And I said, how can I help you? Or what can I do for you? I don't know what I said. How am I supposed to remember? But I did talk to him, and I said, do you have a radio? Radio might help. And that way, if you get stuck on the runway, you, you know, and then I also said, maybe can you land on the taxiway instead of the runway? He asked if that was right. I said, I don't know. Ask the airport manager. I don't know the FARs. He should. You can talk to him about it. Again, one of those days, I know a pilot on that Sunday when, he, when this man was running up and down the, the runway, I do know a pilot called Morgan Scott to ask for, to tell him something's wrong. Morgan Scott did not respond with, until a week later or the end of that week. We don't have time for that. Um, it, it just, you're all talking about an issue that you weren't there and you don't know. This was one letter from one man that nobody even knows about. And all of a sudden he shows up and there's a police report. I'm sorry, but I think that police report was written so that you could have it on paper so that you could hold it against us. We are not belligerent. We are not out there. We are out there trying to protect the city of Cottonwood. And if Morgan Scott would answer immediately and run to there and take care of an emergency, you bet I'd call him in an instant. But he's not available half the time. And, and so what do I do? Let this man start causing problems for other people on the city of, on the airport? No. I have, especially my people, if something happens in the city of Cottonwood and one of my passengers who have come to Cottonwood gets injured because we don't have any, anybody on the airport, anybody who's taking care of the, the safety issues, who's going to get sued beside me? The city of Cottonwood. So we are really trying to protect the entire city of Cottonwood. Okay? I, I need you guys to understand that. And I also need you to understand that Morgan Scott is not 100% available. And if we've called the police, which we've done in the past, it's held against us. So I almost feel like we're darned if we do and we're darned if we don't. So thank you for listening to me. I, I really wish you could take this letter in the context it was written by a man who showed up last minute all of a sudden before this meeting and blows this all out of proportion. And I would love to sit with him and you and go over it. Thank you. I do have a question for okay. you, Ms. Perky. Given that you had that opportunity 
to explain your side of the story, why did you choose not to? We were trying to figure out what incident. When I'm on that airport, because I am there almost every single day, I get phone calls, people wanting to rent aircraft, I get people wanting to buy fuel, I get people wanting to um, <clears throat> buy oil, I get people wanting to know if there's a rental car, I get people calling me left and right trying to figure out because there's no FBO on that airport. <clears throat> Nobody else will answer, but I will answer. So there are many incidences that happen. So we simply asked Morgan Scott if he could clarify what that complaint was. And he did not. He did not respond at all. So Carl Priggy, and that's in that packet as well, the email. Carl Priggy asked, um, what, it, what was the complaint? There was no response from Mr. Scott. Then there was, he said, since we've not heard from you, we have to assume that this matter was taken care of. Still no response. So what do we do? There's no response. There's no communication there. It's just kind of like a bash the Priggy. And that's not what we're here for. Um, there's another other question you said that we have every right to be on this airport. If we do end up having to go off-site, are we still able to land on the airport with a parachute? So I just want to, in the information I have in my packet, mm -hmm. I do have a list here that th there is an email timeline that had Carl ask what the incident was and within uh, you know, not too. F it was an incident regarding a powered parachute, and then Carl asked what the complaint was, and then if he could have a copy. So they explained what the incident was. I think that the city may not may have wanted to just get your take on it, minus interpreting interpreting what the other person said. So I, I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to put together what I'm reading with that. what you're telling me. I understand, and that. I know I that emails. That funny things and they go away and they come back. But right. I, I do see where I think we tried to at least let you know what the incident was in the details. All we knew it was a powered paraglider and there are other than that one gentleman, there are other powered paragliders on the airport. So to be that generic is hard for me to just say anything. Okay. But given that the council had put you and your business on such short leash, I would think that you'd be very concerned about what Morgan Scott what incident Morgan Scott was, was talking about. Why we asked him exactly what the complaint was and there was no response. My side, your side, I guess. There's two different sides to every story. Certainly. And I, I def the, the gentleman was causing um, safety issues and uh, we were not the only ones who happened to say anything or see it, but yes, Mr. Priggy went up, said you're breaking FARs, took pictures. We had pictures of him breaking the FARs. And, um, and he turned and walked away. Mm -hmm. Also, Mr. Priggy was not flying that day. Someone else was flying that day. Um, Mr. Priggy could not have, that. he took the picture and there goes our airplane in, in the background. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man had a lot of misinformation there. So I, that letter to me, mm -hmm. you're basing my lease with you on a one-sided letter from a man who appeared out of nowhere. He's never been at that airport before, and all of a sudden he's there causing issues, not only for me, but for other parachute or for other airplanes. I understand, but how many how many times does Mr. Priggy go out onto the runway and take photos of people? Well, when this, because of the previous issues with the hang gliders, we have been informed by legal counsel to take all pictures that we can to back up our story. So how many times has, time. has an incident occurred where in recent months, Mr. Priggy has gone out and take, taken this photos? This one time. So given that it was only one time, wouldn't you think that that was the incident that Mr. Morgan Scott was referring to? And if you had it on film, wouldn't you well, think it would be a good idea to present it to the city council or to if, Morgan Scott? If um, he had specified a little more other than the power paraglider, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could sit there and assume which power paraglider, but is that right to assume something? Okay. Because from my perspective, it would appear you're just being difficult to work with. Well, I'm sorry that you that you see that. We just want to make sure that we give accurate information instead of just going around throwing out. Well, accurate information will be on film, right? Right. I guess I don't understand where you're going with this. Just ask me a question. But you, Vice Mayor, I, I had the same hand. question. If um, Morgan asked um, for your side of it, and you had gone out and taken photos or pictures, to me, if that were me taking out, uh, going out there taking photos or pictures. That would be the incident, and I would offer that information to the city. So we probably wouldn't even be here tonight if you you had returned 
an answer to Morgan on the incident, because otherwise, what do you have, five or six incidents out there? You only had the one that you took the pictures of. That would be the incident that you would send the photos back. So we probably wouldn't even be discussing this tonight. If we had gotten some kind of an answer, it wouldn't have come to the city council. I think that's what um, Mr. Elinsky was getting at, too. Yes. Mr. Pratt? Yes, as well, Morgan's email did say on April 15th, he, he said, you know, um, I had received a complaint about an event at the airport yesterday, which would have then been April 14th. So it makes me wonder if there were more than one incident on April 14th. That mm -hmm. should have been fairly clear what incident he was writing about since it only happened the day before. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we should have received more information. And certainly we're, we're sensitive to your issues, but sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire, there's been a lot of incidents like this that have arisen, and that concerns some of us too. Let me, let me say one thing, though. I really do respect your passion for safety, and I know that you want to run a safe business, and I know that you do run a safe business, and I really do respect that. I'm a small business owner too, and safety is paramount too in my business, and I respect your passion. But when I see a long list of police reports that contain facts, and when I see that there's personal property damage on the part of Mr. Briggy, it, it concerns me. And like Terrence said, where there's smoke, there's fire, this isn't, I'm, I don't want to pick on a small business. That's the last thing I want to do right now. I want to see you succeed in your business, but I can't represent the citizens of Cottonwood well if I would lease their property, it's the citizen's property, to an operator that, whose behavior, who conducts himself like this. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any more comments or questions? Any more comments from members of the public? So the next step is to uh, make a motion or not. I'll propose a motion. I make a motion to terminate the ground lease with Red Rock skydiving uh, within 120 days. Uh, just to, to clarify, the, the, the current status uh, of their tenancy is they, they are month to month because the last lease expired. So I, I think that the direction, if I can translate, is, is your, your directing staff in that motion uh, to provide a, a notice to vacate um, in 120 days. And I want to make sure that they're still able, as anybody else is, to use that airport property. We're talking about the ground lease. To, uh, we're told they can still use the airport. Yeah, during that 120 day. Right, but even afterwards, they're still free to land and operate their business. On, yeah, okay. So um, there's been a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Okay, the next item is approval of a Title uh, VI Implementation Plan for Cottonwood Area Transit. Mr. Morrow. Madam Mayor, Council, um, this is not really anything new. It's something that's been in all our, our contracts with the state, our uh, grant applications it's been in like four or five different places within the grant application this year they want it all put in one place so that it could be all nice and neat and packaged and that's basically all this is is, is a plan that puts all the title six information in one place and they wanted it that way this year so it's not anything new a lot to read, but <laughs> it's it just a lot does the to same read. old thing. Trust me, I gave you the short version. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pratt. We always have one. This is a no-brainer. All it's doing is consolidating all the information in one place that we need to abide by to be legal, to be within the, the law. So I don't see any problem with this one whatsoever. A no-brainer? A no-brainer. Okay. And so, any more comments, Mr. Morrow? Not at this point in time, unless you have other questions. Uh, it's basically, it just tells them that when we put up 
any kind of new uh, bus stops or any kind of facilities that we're not going to discriminate as to where we put them. And we're not going to do that because, well, we... Because we just don't do that. Just don't do that. So we obey the law. Right. Mr. Pratt. Time for a motion. Any comments from members of the public on this item? Please. I move to adopt the Title VI Implementation Plan as presented and direct staff to submit the plan to the Arizona Department of Transportation's Office of Civil Rights. Second. Okay, Mr. Pratt made the motion. The Vice Mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, cancellation of the design build solicitation for the Civic Center HVAC project. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, Mayor Council, we're, we're uh, asking Council to allow us to uh, cancel the design build solicitation to 2015 PW04 that was um, issued back in December. Uh, we wanted to bring it to Council. To, uh, you know, I know that Council is, is, would like to get, get something started on that Civic Center. Um, however, the design build uh, route that we were taking ended up um, costing us uh, nearly $90,000 more. The bids that came in were $90,000 more than we anticipated. We budgeted $160,000 and we were at $254,000. Wow. Um, we, uh, we had several individuals involved in trying to negotiate that price a little bit further down. We got it down to, to $219,000. Our uh, procurement manager, uh, Jeff Cook was involved, I believe Morgan was also involved in those discussions. Uh, and we just couldn't get, uh, get it down below 219,000. That was still $60,000 above where we were anticipated we, we needed to be. Um, what we decided to do before we had this, put this on the agenda, we had a, we had a talk with uh, Council Member Alinsky uh, to get his take on it, seeing that he's a builder, and, and, and get his take on, on exactly what we want to do with this project. Uh, we feel that the, the company, I'm, MCOR, and their engineer overbuilt this, this particular program, um, over-engineered it, and we'd much rather go out and get an engineer to look and, and design the plans for it, built to the way we want it to do, get our, 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 uh, our take on what we want done on that building, and then go ahead and bid it out rather than the design build uh, setup. So at this point in time, we'd like to ask council to allow us to cancel this and move forward with maybe getting an engineer to do this and engineer it the way we need it engineered and then go ahead and bid it out, do a hard bid on it. Mr. Could I just offer a little bit more? Sure. So I met with Mr. Cook and, and Morgan Scott um, and uh, others. Houseman, thank you. Yes, Rudy, yeah, by phone. Um, anyway, I, I think uh, I, I looked over, um, and Mr. Cook sent me the, all the background information. There was a feasibility study that was conducted. Um, I, I think I would find maybe more fault with the feasibility study and, and their suggestions and how to, um, you know, in, install the. I think MCOR did, you know, everything that the feasibility study suggested, and that that may be why the, the cost is so expensive. And I haven't gone through it line by line, um, but uh, you know. I would like to have another opportunity to sit down at the at the very beginning and maybe come up with, um, you know, maybe not necessarily another feasibility study, but a different a different look or maybe a couple different options on how to do the installation over there. Um, it's an older building, and so people tend to uh, the, the same methodology methodology doesn't apply. Um, so I think there's just another way to, to look at it, and hopefully get that cost in in line with what we've budgeted. And, and interestingly, the feasibility study, their, their estimate too was in line with what the city had budgeted for that project. So um, I, I think they over-engineered it and then MCOR maybe bid it to the T is what occurred. Um, no, no fault on MCOR, I think they did a very thorough job, but there's, if we just take, take a step back and have another look at it, I think we could do better. And mind so, you, if I think if we don't if we don't get this project kicked off this year, we'll go ahead and roll those those funds over into next fiscal year and try to get it done first part of the fiscal year. Sure, will be I nice. To ask you a question. Too. First part of the fiscal year is July first, so it's right when it's so hot and it would feel so good to have air conditioning in there. 
Mr. Pratt. So as a professional and somebody who really is concerned about what goes on with that building as part of our historic preservation, you recommend going with the staff's recommendation on this one? I absolutely would, yeah. That should be a no-brainer then, too. I think we should go period correct, just set the locks of ice with some fans. <laughs> Buy a lot of ice from her. So. Right, that's true. That's a good point. Rudy would like that. Any comments from members of the public? If not, I would entertain a motion. I'll jump on that one. Okay, Mr. Dowling. I move Dowling. to cancel the design build solicitation of number 2015PW04 for the Civic Center HVAC project and authorize staff to contract with a qualified design professional to design and produce a set of plans for the project. Second. Okay, Mr. Dowling made the motion. The vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. In that motion, to, it isn't necessary to, I'd like to be a part of that. I know it was in the staff report, but there's nothing that the council has to do to. No, no I, sure. I think we'll just, we'll just make it a point to get you involved from the, from the very beginning. Okay, great. Or from the restart, whichever the case may be. Thank you. Okay, item number eight, consideration, discussion, and possible approval of a proposed settlement agreement with the Rival Sons Band. Madam Mayor and Council, um, the um, 2014 Thunder Valley Rally was a successful event, but it was not a perfectly successful event. The, the city engaged a promoter uh, with all the best intentions um, to, among other things, um, contract with and uh, provide for the entertainment. Um, this particular act um, was selected, contracted. Uh, I think a first payment was made, um, came and performed as agreed, and uh, a dispute arose with the promoter and, and the promoter. Uh, and this isn't surmise on our part. The, the promoter has said in no uncertain terms and said it months ago, um, we will not pay you. Um, the, the reasons uh, are not either clear or logical. Um, to, to me and to staff um, for why the promoter is not paying the band. Um, the band has subsequently approached the city um, with a request and a legal theory for why the city should be uh, liable for the balance due. Um, not particularly um, persuaded by the, by the legal theory and, and we've, we've discussed this, but litigation is time-consuming, expensive, always uncertain. Um, the band did, and, and I think I'm parroting some of the things the council said previously when it gave staff direction. Um, the, the band uh, performed, you know, showed up and, and performed in good faith uh, with an expectation of, of being compensated. Uh, sort of jumping on the comment about small business. Um, this band is a small business. So uh, I was directed to uh, dialogue with the attorneys for the band who had approached the city um, and this is the product of those discussions. Um, it uh, in a nutshell consists of a of a payment of two thousand dollars of I believe what uh, they are owed from the promoter of seven thousand um, dollars in exchange for a complete release of all claims against the city. So uh, basically the city is, is um, Go, taking a step toward making the band hold and, and more importantly, buying its piece. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pratt. Yeah, this is another one we discussed quite a bit and we realized we're not legally responsible, although they could bring us to litigation. And I think this is a goodwill gesture on our part, $2,000, and it's a lesson on our part maybe to run our productions ourselves, not hire a production company. So I think, again, this one's on real close to a no-brainer. Let's do it and get it out and put it in the past and learn from it. Any other comments from members of the council? I have one quick question. Yes. Does this limit them in the right to still go after the promoter? Um, not only does it not, um, but they have, they have given every indication that they, they intend to pursue. Um, relief from the promoter. Uh, I, I would ask and, and propose that in the council's motion um, you authorize me to uh, 
agree to certain non-material changes. There's been some email exchanges since I forwarded a draft uh, to council for the band, um, and they, they, she asked for a, a couple of things, one of which I'm, I'm inclined to say yes to, and, and uh, one of which I'm not. Madam Mayor, um, just an, an additional benefit to this is um, we're dealing with uh, the same management company uh, on another band that represented rival sons, and they recognize this as a, a goodwill gesture on the city's behalf. They certainly recognize the city could have been a lot tougher on this and just refused to pay it, and, and so they see it as the city doing the right thing. Good. Any comments from members of the public? Mr. Pratt? I move to approve the proposed settlement agreement with the Rival Sons Band as presented and grant our lawyer the right to make some material changes to the agreement. Non-material. Non-material changes to the agreement. <laughs> Second. So Mr. Pratt made the motion and Mr. Elinsky, was that you? Yep. Seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Claims and adjustments. I'm stepping down for that. Move we pay the claims. Second. Okay, will you please note for the record that Jesse Dowling declared a conflict? The mayor made the motion and Councilmember Garrison seconded it. Vice Mayor. Vice mayor. <laughs> I, I think. I make her a mayor yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is, maybe at the next meeting you could start out here. <laughs> My Freudian slip, right? <laughs> I'm fine, right where I am. So the vice mayor made the motion <clears throat> and did you second it, Mr. Yes, Garrison? Mr. I Garrison seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move to adjourn. Second. The mayor made the motion <laughs> and the Aye. vice mayor seconded Aye. it. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>